like me to be aware of, sir? Um, I'm going to try to keep it as brief as possible. Well, make sure it's as thorough as possible. Okay. I, I, I really believe like kids should have both their parents, but right now I want them to have an environment where they feel like they can thrive and really succeed. Because like, as a child that went through foster care and later was adopted, and the stuff that's going on over there, it, right now, I don't believe that's the best for them right now. Okay, you're going to have to tell me what stuff you're talking about, stuff going on over there. That doesn't okay. tell me anything. Um, first, first off, um, just the way our kids are treated. Um, her mother's new boyfriend, he's assaulted both our kids, a CPS case about it. Um, there's, <sighs> her, like, the way, like, she she texted our daughter, saying she might be homeless because her boyfriend, her current boyfriend, is talking to somebody about somebody else, and she don't know if she's going to have a place to stay. On top of that, it's just... Crap. This is way harder than I thought. When there's stuff like um when I first met my wife, um me and my family we was helping her get we want to help her get her GED because she wanted to get her GED I will work and I would come home, I would buy her books, I would study, and her mother would tell her, hey, that's too hard for you. And so she gave it up. When we tried to get a place, our very first apartment together, before we even got married, her mom was still her social security checks. So she, at the time, she was on disability because she has bipolar. and. Her mom told her to lie and tell me how much she got. Eventually that came out and her mom got upset. Then there's a fact that when she was 15, her mom was on her date, like a dude who's almost in his thirties and allowed them to sleep together. I'm not saying this to be like, like rude or anything, but like this, this is like the reason why I want to right now have custody of the kids so she can get the environment away from that negative influence. Because the same person that been whispering and doing all this to this whole court interview is the same person. Um, she was almost gang raped. These guys took her, her dead mother's phone, Kelsey phone, and told her she couldn't have it back. Unless they all got to have intercourse. And her mother's response was, hey, they just, they just messing around. We get a we get our first place together, and I'm working and I'm we have a tickle. We have a like I'm tickling her. And her mother calls. And all of a sudden, the police at my door. Turns out, while we was playing around, tickling, she didn't hang up the phone. Her mom called the police and told them that her daughters had been assaulted. The police came. I had to step outside. They interviewed us, and it was like, sorry. Her mother is right there waiting. We will play fight, and she, get not, she used to get upset. Like, well, we won't play fight anymore. I'm like, we can't. We was play fighting. We was wrestling. And I did accidentally hear her on her lip. And the police came. I will work 12 hours a day. 
seven days a week. And hey, he's not doing enough. So I'll do, I'll work 12 hours, come home at lunch, tuck the kids in the bed, get them to sleep. He's not doing enough. I will do more and more and more. I'm just very terrified that like if my kids are bought up in that environment in 10 to 15 years, I'm not trying to be rude, but like you want you might be seeing them in a, your courtroom one day, be like, hey, I remember your name. I don't want that. And so right now I'm trying to build my kids up to be successful, to get an education. Not like a mom who encourages her 14 year old daughter to drop out in ninth grade. I want them to be in an environment where they succeed. Like Kelsey stated earlier, she felt safe from my family. My, I don't like saying my adopted family, but I think I have to clarify that. I am adopted and my adopted family, only thing we strive for is to try to better ourselves. And when I got adopted, it changed my life. Especially being in foster care, like I've seen too many people just like her. And I thought I could change that. I I couldn't. Um, it is true. I did get arrested for operating while visually impaired, but there's no excuse for that. And like I still own up to it because that was my fault. But Kelsey was there. I had gotten off work. Friday, we was doing 12s. We got a three-day weekend. Got off work. I was at home playing the game. And I was drinking with my friends. And then I we got Kelsey was right there. And we got the call. It was like, hey, my girlfriend kicked me out. I have nowhere to go. And this is like February. It was still cold out. I told Kelsey, hey. I'm going to give him my room. He can stay here for a night. Blah, blah, blah. I did end up getting pulled over when I picked him up because it turns out his him and his girlfriend had assaulted each other and the police was actually looking for him. And they pulled us over at a gas station. I blew a point zero eight three. I'm sorry. I don't remember. But I do not drink and I do not drive with my kids in the car. That is false. But ever since then, I like I can't I can't go out I can't go out with my friends. I can't like if I go out and try to even have a beer, it's always he drank too much at the school. Even the teachers, even the teachers, the principal, it was like, hey, man, we got you. No matter what happens, the police are always called. And it's always, oh, he drank too much. And every single time I pass, like, yo, I'm, I don't drink. Like, like, I don't. I'm like, yo, I can't, if I have a beer, suddenly, yep, he's an alcoholic. I'm like, no. That's why I continue to get tested. Even right now, I could come in and I still pass. Only thing I'm worried about right now is honestly just the well being. I don't want my kids growing up in ghettos. I don't want my kids to be in an environment where, like, they're, I hate to say it, this, they're discriminated against. Like, they, they can't have their hair. They can't have, like, her mother and their family. They, I don't like playing a race. I don't like talking like this. 
I'm not trying to play a race car, but like they're racist. They don't like us. And then we have Kelsey on the phone telling new guy, like, I'm going to try to get his money and hope I can get his money this time. I hope I can get this. Her parents or her mother sitting there, hey, come on. I'm going to take it's a little child support. We're going to get child support for you. You can stay with me, but you got to pay me. It's just like, I don't want my kids to be a money grab. There are more to kids. They're not asked to be. But it's our responsibility as parents to try to do what's right for them. That's, that's my only thing. I'm done. Okay. Ms. Daniel, do you have any uh, questions of the defendant? Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. Since when did I tell you that my boyfriend wanted money from you? Or you wanted money from him or something? I never said that. That's uh, a lie. Ma'am, this is your time to ask questions, not yes. to respond to anything he said. Understand? Yes. I've, I've, only, I've only admonished you a few times. If I keep going to do this, I'm not going to let you speak. You understand? Yes, sir. Okay, so don't do it again. Go ahead and ask your questions. Okay, so when the CPS get involved with so-called Joel abusing our kids, when did that happen? Where's the case? CPS was involved, and I'm trying to think. That's not what I'm asking. When when the CPS when the CPS had to come to our house and there was an investigation. Because Kyrie honked um, Audrey's son, and then the abuse case came up. Because you guys called, you guys kept calling CPS to try to get a CPS case opened against us, and then they was all cleared out. And Amara, Ariana, and Kyrie all admitted to CPS. That Joe had kicked Kyrie, and that he had hit, he had hit Lorenzo. You know this because you was there. No, I was not. No, ma'am, it's so, not your time to testify or make remarks. You ask questions. Any other questions? I'm thinking on her. <laughs> okay, is it true that you and Audrey are about to have a baby together? You're trying. No. Isn't it true that I'm not a bad mother? It's not true. You're, I wouldn't say that you're a bad mother. It's just you have bad influences and the people around you are not great influences. That's why Amara feels the way she feels about you. Because like even your sister, like Tiara, our family friend, we have Audrey, like we can all, we all keep telling you, like we can still hear your mother in the back trying to coach you. She, all she does is bring you down. You're not a bad mother. It's just that you're really, your mother's been manipulating and trying to control your whole life because she, she get a check from you. And you even, you even admit it. You know, your mom don't care about you. She just want to check. You can't rely on your mother. 
because she takes everything from you. She, your mom stole your WIC card for like how many months now? You don't use eggs. She says you don't use eggs and you don't use the milk. So she took your card. So where, where has your WIC card been? You're asking me a question now? No, he I'm can't sorry. ask you questions. You ask the questions, Miss Daniel. Okay, I was sorry. Because he started asking me a question. It was rhetorical, but go ahead. I really don't know what else to ask right now. Okay. So do you have any more questions? I have questions for you, Honor, from you. It's something I wanted to know that I forgot to ask you, if that's okay. I mean, let's do with this first. Are you done asking questions of the defendant? Um, yes, I am. Okay. And what, uh, what question did you have for me? Um, when... So tell he got his 401k when we were married and the tax money. Is it, can I go after that too? Am I able to get that? No, I didn't you know, no, you're not. Because I'll tell you what happens is in the case scheduling order, when you were at the scheduling conference, you identified the issues that were in dispute and the issues that were in dispute uh, were Custody, support, parenting time, spousal support. You did not address any property issues. In fact, uh, stated there were no property issues. So you can't go in at the day of trial when we've went all the way through these proceedings and now bring up something at the last minute when the case is 169 days old. Okay, understandable. So. Okay, I have a couple. I have some questions for you, sir. Uh, in view of your testimony, uh, where where are you working at now? I work at Musashi um, Auto Parts. Okay. And how much do you make per hour? Twenty three. Twenty three hundred. Okay. And do you have any other source of income other than through from Masashi? Um, I'm currently in the process of starting a small business. I can't really give you a figure, but I we made about three thousand uh, in the last three months. Okay. Now, when you say we made three thousand, uh, is that gross revenue? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you know how much the net was? To be honest, at this at this moment, I I couldn't tell you. I okay. I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, you said that you had a OWI sometime back. When did that occur? I had OWVI operating my visually impaired. I didn't have an OWI, sir. Okay. So you had an M and OWI. You had an M well, I know. You had a DUI then operate driving while impaired. Uh, no, I had operating while visually impaired, sir. Okay. What? When did that occur? That occurred in 2019 of March. Okay. Actually, Your Honor, I'm sorry. That was actually 2016. Okay. Uh, Explain to me uh, your relationship with your children. Mostly, I, I, I don't know if I could really put in words. Like, it's more like a Southern father. Like, I want to 
see my kids succeed. And so my kids always come to me advice. They come to me and tell me like stuff that's happening at school, academically, like if my kids don't understand anything, they come to me because they feel like I always have the answers. And I most of the time I read like most like basic elementary stuff. I got it. But like they come to me for everything. And so we usually just talk, we sit down, we talk. Um, our relationship is, I think, getting closer to the ideal relationship of like a TV dad. I'm sorry to say it like that, but that TV dad that comes home from work and the kids can come and talk to the dad and re communicate. That's it, Your Honor. That's the best way I can explain. Okay. Mm -hmm. The plaintiff had testified that uh, that she had Lorenzo up until approximately sometime in May. Is that correct? I don't know if I'm being rude, but this might be really distasteful. But is it okay if I ask her when did she lose that that poor no. child? No, we now we if you don't if you don't know you don't know well i i know it was around the time that she was getting ready to lose that yeah that I, under, child. I understand that i understand that i'm just saying you don't well, know what it was We're, it's not time to question her at this point yeah I'm, I'm, i was trying to get a time frame um, i understand uh how often between uh let's say november and approximately may during that time, uh, how often did you have Lorenzo in your care? Uh, two months. Okay. Now, was it a two months at a period of time? Was it two months over? I, I the remember, like over, over, over a time period. Okay. <laughs> and I take it from what uh, has been said that uh, Amara does not visit the uh, plaintiff. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. But the other two children, uh, Ariana and Kyrie, they, they do visit her? Yes, whenever we can have a rain time to do it, they do. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. Anything else, sir, that you would like me to be aware of? No, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Daniel, as a result of uh, my questioning, do you have any uh, additional questions? Okay. No. No? Okay. Thank you. Well, it looks like that concludes your testimony, Mr. Daniel. Uh, you don't have any other uh, witnesses, correct? Correct, Your Honor. Okay.
Ms. Daniel, I'll ask, uh, do you have any rebuttal witnesses in this matter? Uh, no. Okay. That looks like uh, that concludes the uh, proofs. Uh, in this uh, particular case, so the court will go to you first, Ms. Daniel. You can make any closing argument that you'd like. I, okay. I just feel like my kids should be with me. I don't really want to lose my kids. I do love my kids to death. I would never harm them. I do want what's best for my children. I already lost one. I don't need to lose the other four. I'm a loving, caring mother like me and my kids have do have a good bond. We're playful together. Like I'm like I do anything for them, anything they ask for. And I always got in trouble by Edward. Don't do that. You know, you're doing too much. That's because that's the type of mother I am. I just want to make my children happy. I want to make sure they're happy. I never had a, you know, happy childhood like that, but I want my kids to have that. So I try to do what's best for them in any type of way I can. And it upsets me when I do have to discipline them and tell them no and sit them in time out. I don't like that. It's just, you know, when kids don't listen, they have to go to time out and get things taken from them when they're misbehaving. It still hurts me and I cry, but I. You know, and yes, the house may get dirty, but that's because you got kids. You know, I have to clean up three times a day, but they go right behind me and destroy again. But you know what? It's a part of having kids. It's a part of being a mother. You have to do those things. But that's all I got to say. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Daniel, uh, any closing argument? Yes, Your Honor. I will. I, I I have no problem admitting that. Like she is very, she's a very caring mother. But when it comes to raising the children and the people that's around the children and the environment, it's not good. And so, only thing I'm like. The only reason I'm even here is just to make sure that the kids have an environment. I do not, like, even if, let's say I do get sole custody, she, the kids will always be in her grasp whenever she needs. It's just those of the environment. I do not want my kids to grow <laughs> up in those environments. Well, well, parents what her parents called them racial slurs with them being hit because they hair looked nappy like i want them to grow up in an environment like right now it's not a good environment and i'm not here to take kids. <coughs> i'm here right now to give them the best life they can have because me and her laid together and we brought those children into this world. They, they didn't ask for this. And so it's time to put up. Oh crap. I almost say time to put on big girls panties. Oh crap. That's on record. Oh God. Um, it's time to, we got to step up and like, we got to give them the best <laughs> life they can have. That's the only thing I'm looking at. That's the only thing I'm looking at. I'm not looking at money. Shoot. Take the money. I don't care. Car. Take it. House. Take it. I don't care about that. What I care about is those kids. Cause like, I don't, I don't think they understand. Like when I was in foster care and when all of us kids had to sit around waiting to get adopted and you hear the stuff, you hear it and it haunts. 
it haunts me. And then now I'm look, I'm literally, I'm like, I'm literally looking at it right now. And it's like, my kid's gonna be in that situation now. Nah. That's why I work 12 hours, seven days a week. That's why I, I bust my butt. Kelsey's right here so she can tell you I'm not. I work my butt off so my kids will never, ever, have to go through that and like i said she's a really caring mother it's just i believe and i'm not saying this in a bad way i believe she really had to let go of those people that's whispering in her ear because they taken everything from her her whole life her mother that one has stripped everything from her to keep Kelsey in control because she made a statement <laughs> about me sleeping with her sister. That's correct, but she didn't tell how I work 12 days a week. I mean, 12 hour days, seven days a week. And she was cooking for another dude, but I would come home with nothing to eat. I'd come home food. And so, yeah, we broke up and I did end up doing it. But guess what? The sis her biological sister, her blood sister that she was talking about, don't want nothing to do with any of them. Her blood sister cut her mother off because she saw what her mother was doing. Everybody around her, we keep trying to tell her, your mother is really just dragging you down. You don't and have I to do put not, my I daughter and me into it, Edward. Hold on, ma'am. Stop talking. You're not involved in these proceedings. If you need to, leave the room. If I hear you again, ma'am, we'll have you in and have you held in contempt of court. Go ahead, Mr. Daniels. We keep... Like, if you, you can ask Kelsey, like, who's her friends now? She don't have any because her mother pulled them all away. Kelsey's alone. Just the way her mother wants her to be. Like, like I said, I'm not saying this to be rude or put Kelsey down. Kelsey is a really caring person. That's what's sad. She's such a sweet person. But she got those evil people. The person you just heard in the back. I swear. You said like we're here for sole custody and like I made a statement about temporary custody. But that's what I'm saying. Like the reason I'm looking for sole custody right now isn't permanent. I just want to give our kids a better environment, let Kelsey work, get a place. Get her driver's license. She's almost 30 with no driver's license. Let's go ahead. Come on, build up, build up. That way, our kids, like, I, I'm going to my mom. Boom, my mom got this. My boom, my mom got that. And I know that we're taken care of. Not sitting at your mom's apartment, that one bedroom apartment. I know Kelsey's better than this because when me and my family was helping her get her GED, she was killing it. It got to a point where she, I got her up to college calculus. And I'm really bad. I'm really bad at calculus. She, she was feeling and she got it right. And then her mom walked up. Kelsey, that's too hard for you. Now you ask Kelsey, what's eight times eight? She cannot give you the answer. She gives up. Her mother continues to make her give up. That's why I want them in that environment. When we went to Texas, like she said, she felt safe from my family the whole time. Well, Kelsey, they just want to take the kids and leave you homeless. We was offered a four bedroom, three bath house with two cars. Cause my grandmother is getting old. And on, that was the only condition. We had to take care of my grandmother. 
Mr. Daniel, I don't want to cut you off, but you need to only address what was put into evidence through the testimony, et cetera. Okay. All this other stuff, nobody testified to this. So the yeah, court yeah, can't yeah. consider it. I'm sorry. You know what? I, I, I knew right there. You're right. I was getting emotional. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Anything else, sir? No, sir. Okay. Ms. Daniel, anything else that you have? Yes, I do. Okay. My kids will be brought up in a good environment. If I get sole custody of my kids, I would not let anybody harm my children or let no harm come to my children. I do want what's best for those kids. They do deserve a good life. They didn't ask to be here. And that's what I want to give them. And I can provide that for them. And no, I'm not with my mom. I don't stay with her. I have, a, we have a house. That's where I stay. Residing with my boyfriend in his house. He has a house. I don't come to my mom's house anymore. This is the first time I've been here in months. And that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Well, the court has uh, heard the uh, testimony, the proofs in this uh, particular matter. I will state first, it's clear from listening to the parties that there has been a breakdown of the marital relationship to the extent that the object of matrimony has been destroyed and there remains no reasonable likelihood the marriage can be preserved. As a result, the court will grant the, uh, the judgment of divorce. Ms. Uh, Daniel, I'm going to have you, if you have been able to, or if not, you can go back and look at this because you're gonna to have to, as the plaintiff, you're gonna to have to prepare the judgment and the Uniform Child Support Order, et cetera. So you're gonna to have to pay attention to what the ruling is because you have to put that in a, uh, again, in a judgment of divorce and a Uniform Child Support Order. I will tell you in this matter, just so you're aware that the court has heard the testimony and the court in this matter will be bound by the law that exists in the state of Michigan. Uh, I'm not swayed by any uh, any particular testimony or by any emotions that come up in the case. So I want you to be aware that it'll be strictly on the law as relates to this matter. Court will note that there was uh, the parties uh, were married in this matter on or about August 16, 2013. They separated on or about uh, November 26, 2022. Prior to that time, they had resided in the same household, been in various states as we heard the testimony. Michigan went to Texas for a period of time, then came back. Uh, during that time, the parties did, in fact, uh, raise the children together. Uh, the defendant was, in fact, the primary breadwinner in the household, although the plaintiff did work during that time. They have Four children, Amara, age nine, Oriana, age seven, Kyrie, age five, and Lorenzo, age one. In this fact case, the court will note that uh, the custody cases are governed by the best interest of the child test as delineated under the Child Custody Act, being Michigan Compile Laws 722.23. We will specifically address each one of the factors in just a moment. However, the first task in any custody case is to determine if an established custodial environment exists. An established custodial environment exists if over an appreciable time, the child naturally looks to the custodian in that environment for guidance, discipline, necessities of life, and parental comfort. The statute provides that the age of the child, the physical environment, and the inclination of the custodian and the child to the permanency of the relationship shall be considered. Uh, Michigan Compiled Laws 722.26a requires that the court consider an award of joint custody and uh, joint custody will be awarded uh, in a case where the parties are able to cooperate concerning child related issues. Doesn't matter whether they get along, it's a matter of whether they can cooperate in that manner. I think, well, I'll address that in a moment. As I said, the first task is to determine whether an established custodial environment exists. Court will note that the testimony in this case has been that when the plaintiff left the household back in uh, November of 2022, 
that she took with her and had in her care, Lorenzo, up until approximately May of this year. It could have been a little bit earlier or something of that nature. But the other three children were principally in the care of the defendant. As a result, the court is going to have to, when I look at the testimony, I'm looking at, again, the guidance, discipline, necessity of life, and parental comfort. The testimony has been in this particular matter that, in fact, uh, the when Lorenzo was with the uh, plaintiff, that she obviously was looking to him, or excuse me, she he was looking to her for that care, guidance, necessity of life, parental comfort. Uh, and in fact, the defendant had testified that during that approximate, uh, I guess you at this point, probably uh, seven months during that particular time that again, Lorenzo was primarily with his mother and he had about two months during that time when they were in his particular care. In contrast, the opposite is true regarding the other children. Uh, and that I took the uh, plaintiff through the uh, months as we went in this uh, particular case. And a note that uh, he acknowledged that uh, in December 22, she had a couple days each week with the children. In January, the same, February 2023, March 2023, the same, a couple of days per month, I mean, excuse me, per week that she had the children with her. However, in April, uh, she didn't have the kids as well as uh, May, May, she didn't have the kids. In June, she's only had uh, Kyrie for a period of, of time. It does appear that, again, the, the three older children were, uh, again, did look to the defendant for, again, guidance, discipline, necessity of life, and parental comfort. I'll get into that as we go through the factors to examine that, but it does appear that those uh, factors existed in the defendant's home. As a result, the court will find that the three older children, Amara, Ariana, and Kyrie, uh, have an established custodial environment with the defendant in this uh, particular matter, that Lorenzo's established custodial environment would have been with the plaintiff in this case. The reason that's important is that the legislature has found that where an established custodial environment exists, the court cannot change the established custodial environment except upon a showing of clear and convincing evidence. And that's done to minimize the prospect of unwarranted or disruptive change in custody and to erect barriers against removal of the child from the established custodial environment, except in the most compelling cases. When there is no established custodial environment, the burden is simply a preponderance of proof. In this case, as in most cases, credibility is always an issue. There has been some uh, each party has had some witnesses testify, and the court is considering the credibility of those particular witnesses in deciding and determining the case. Often, I, parties will allege that the other party or their witnesses are untruthful in their testimony, but however, the court finds that, uh, again, oftentimes parties and witnesses Testimony is affected by their background, perception, bias, understanding, or misunderstanding, and is not always and not necessarily the result of intentional untruthfulness. To assess credibility, the court looks to other witnesses and other evidence to arrive at an objective understanding, and the court has made such an obsess assessment in this case uh, because obviously in some instances there was inconsistent or contradictory evidence. And the court will take into consideration credibility in assessing the evidence in the case. As I go through the uh, ruling, I will attempt to assess and address the salient evidence, but I can't address all 
as we'd have to spend an additional day here going over everything. It does appear in this matter that the parties had had many issues during the marriage and the court cannot correct or solve any and all the problems and difficulties the parties have experienced during their marriage. The court can only resolve in the disputes that exist at this time. And again, there's been many, the testimony about many issues, conduct during the marriage. The court is always struck by the fact that during a marriage, these issues, conduct, which were seemingly obtruse and insignificant, however, now with the light of the divorce proceedings shined on them, they are raised as character assassination in an attempt to disparage or demonstrate how deficient the other party is. And there were a number of these issues that were addressed in this uh, particular case. Court has to, and I will now go through the best interest of the child test. The first factor the court has to address is the love, affection, and other emotional ties existing between the parties involved and the children. I would say as I go through the best interest of the child test, the court has attempted to, through the various witnesses, to, again, supplement the testimony, because quite frankly, a lot of the testimony in this case was devoid of evidence on the factors under the Child Custody Act. However, many of those did come through. In this case, it does appear that the parties both love their children. It does appear from the testimony that the children have a loving relationship with their parents. And uh, again, it looks like based upon some of the testimony that, uh, that we could be able to glean in this particular matter that again, the uh, love, affection and emotional ties existing between uh, the plaintiff and Lorenzo is stronger uh, than with that of the defendant. In contrast, the testimony uh, will show that Amara, Ariana, and Kyrie have a stronger uh, emotional ties with the defendant in this case. As a result, as it relates to the two, the four children, I'll find that this factor does favor the plaintiff as it relates to Lorenzo and favors defendant as it relates to the other three children. Next factor is the capacity and disposition of the parties involved to give the children love, affection, guidance, and continuation of the education and raising the children in a particular religion or creed, if any. Uh, the testimony is devoid of any testimony about the parties religious involvement, so the court will not consider that. Uh, the court does note in this uh, particular matter that uh, obviously with Lorenzo, he's very young, so it's hard to find anything if you would rate, obviously nothing as it relates to education, but as it relates to guidance, et cetera, uh, the court does take that into consideration. Uh, in this particular matter, the testimony has shown that, uh, again, Obviously, I think the parties do have the uh, both the capacity. The issue is, do they have the disposition? Meaning, are they doing what they claim that they have the ability to do? In this uh, particular matter, the court will note that uh, the plaintiff has not had substantial involvement with the uh, children after the separation of the parties. It had limited contact with them other than Lorenzo. And again, the defendant did have contact with Lorenzo uh, during this uh, particular time for approximately a total of two months during that approximate seven month period of time. Uh, it does appear in this matter as uh, the defendant had testified and as Ms. Uh, Woodson had testified that uh, that in their home, in that particular home, that they do work on education of the children. It does appear, based upon the testimony, that the education or grades, et cetera, had slipped after the uh, the uh, separation of the parties. That, however, fortunately, is oftentimes uh, something that occurs that is normal in this uh, particular matter. The court will find, based upon the uh, testimony as to the salient portions of factor B, that the plaintiff has a benefit as it relates to Lorenzo 
and defendant has a benefit and it favors him as it relates to the other three children. Next factor is the capacity and disposition of the parties involved to provide the children with food, clothing, medical care, and other remedial care recognized in place of medical care. Again, there's been somewhat devoid about much testimony in this matter. However, the court would note that the testimony would show that during the separation of the parties that the plaintiff was acquiring public assistance for and on behalf of the four children, as she says, of an amount of approximately $900. She was also receiving WIC benefits for Lorenzo. And during that approximate, let's say eight months, she had testified that she'd only given the defendant either between five and $600. Uh, and uh, she had testified, however, that the defendant stated he didn't need it to keep the money, maybe, but there was not any other. The court looks at this as capacity and disposition. She had the capacity, but the court will find as related to the three older child, she, she did not have the position to provide those material needs. And there was testimony at one point that uh, I think it was Kyrie was hospitalized and it was defendant who was responsible for having him in the hospital and taking care of that. As a result, but the court will note with Lorenzo that he was in her care and she was providing for him based upon her receipt of public assistance. The court will find that, uh, again, this factor weighs in favor of the plaintiff as it relates to Lorenzo, but weighs in favor of defendant as to the other three children. Next factor is the length of time the children have lived in a stable, satisfactory environment, desirability of maintaining continuity in this matter. Uh, it does appear, again, that uh, Lorenzo was in the plaintiff's care the majority of the time. Uh, it does appear, although there's been some question or uh, alluding to the fact that the uh, plaintiff may not be in that home long term, uh, that there's been no credible testimony that there's nothing other than stable. Likewise, there's no testimony, Ben, that the uh, home of the defendant is not a stable environment as well. So the court will again find that as it relates to Lorenzo, that that environment in the plaintiff's home is stable and satisfactory. And as it relates to defendant and the other three children is stable and satisfactory as well. The permanency of the family unit existing or proposed custodial homes. There's been no testimony about any lack of permanency in the family unit, so the court weighed this factor to be equal. The next factor was the moral fitness of the parties involved. There's been very little testimony about the moral fitness of the parties. The only thing, there was some allegations of drinking on the part of the defendant by the plaintiff and her witnesses. However, that was not substantiated by any other, what a court will consider objective witnesses. There was the admission by him that he did have a drinking driving offense back in 2016. That's now seven years ago. The court doesn't find that to, again, be uh, at issue at the current time. The court is going to find that the parties do each demonstrate moral fitness and will weigh that factor equally. Next factor is the physical and mental health of the parties involved. The only thing there's been some statements that the plaintiff was and had exhibited signs of being bipolar. Uh, that was not really highlighted in any way in the testimony, uh, although it stated a reference that uh, she might have been on some uh, disability at some point as a result of that but there was no independent testimony or evidence of that point. The court cannot find that this factor weighs in favor of either party. The court will weigh that factor equally. Next factor is the homeschool and community record of the ch children. There's not been any testimony about the community record. There has been testimony about the older children in the school record briefly, and the court will consider that. Uh, does appear that all the children have home records in the, the home that they're in. Although again, the evidence on that was slight. The court will find that the fa this factor does favor 
the plaintiff as it relates to Lorenzo and any other three children uh, weigh in favor of the defendant. The next factor is the reasonable preference of the children. If the court considers the children be of sufficient age to express a preference, I did have a chance to speak to the children and the court is taking into account their preference in this matter. Next factor is the willingness and ability of each of the parents to facilitate and encourage a close and continued parent-child relationship with the other parent. In this matter, the court notes that uh, again, uh, the plaintiff has made allegations that the defendant was uncooperative in letting her see the children. However, she does acknowledge that uh, during the months of separation that she was able to see them. And the court would note as well that she did not at any point ever file any action in this particular case to acquire any additional pairing time other than what she had testified to uh, previously on, in her testimony. Uh, the testimony has been that, uh, again, the defendant was able to have time with uh, Lorenzo during that period of separation. And what the court will find that this factor does not favor either party, that they're both equal as it relates to this factor. Next factor is domestic violence, regardless of whether the violence was directed against or witnessed by the children. There has been some allegations of domestic violence. I will say that, however, that has been very scant, although uh, there has been some testimony about that. Uh, but the court does not find any objective testimony about that and uh, finds that much of that testimony appeared to be self-serving. And uh, as a result, the court will not weigh this factor in favor of either party. Any other factor that the court considers as relevant in the particular dispute, as it relates to any other factor, the court does note that, again, the children have, for the most part, been on separate tracks, Lorenzo and uh, the other three children, and the court does note that it's not good for children to be separated, but oftentimes, or unfortunately, sometimes the evidence, uh, again, suggests that uh, that might be what is appropriate based upon uh, the evidence and the law in a particular case. When the court considers all of the evidence, the court does believe and the court will state that the defendant did on uh, closing, did acknowledge that uh, the plaintiff was a caring mother, did acknowledge that uh, it did appear that uh, he and the plaintiff were able to work things out as it relates to various matters concerning the children, or maybe third parties are not involved or intermeddling in the case. And as a result, the court does find that it's appropriate that the parties are granted joint legal custody of all of the children. That means that both of you will have to be consulted concerning important decisions in the children's lives. Uh, change in schools, medication, uh, med you know, non-emergency non surgical situations, things of that particular nature, you have to be you consult with each other. I will tell you so that if you don't come back in three years or six years or whatever it might be and say, oh, yeah, I went in and I decided to change the child's school from here to there. And, yeah, I didn't discuss it with him because I didn't think I had to. Well, I will tell both of you, you have to discuss it with the other party. Doesn't mean you, can't, you have to agree. You just have to discuss it. If you can't agree, then you bring it back to the court for a determination as to what we're going to do. And I will tell you that once you are not able to agree in this matter, the decision is no longer yours. Okay. The decision is mine because you've given the decision to me and I don't like to make the decision. I don't like to do that, but you've turned it over to me. So I'm making the decision. So in the future, if other decisions have to be made, you have to bring it back to the court and I will make those decisions. When 
Like I said, the, the court will grant joint legal custody to the parties as it relates to all of the children. As it relates to Lorenzo, uh, because the established custodial environment was with the plaintiff, she has to show by a preponderance of evidence that it is in his best interest that Lorenzo would remain in her care. The court finds based upon the factors under the Child Custody Act that those factors do justify an award of physical custody of Lorenzo to plaintiff mother. As it relates to the other three children, the evidence demonstrates clearly that it is in their best interest that the defendant be granted physical custody of the three older children. What the court is going to do is the court is going to award parenting time to each of you as to the other children on alternating weekends from Friday at 6 o'clock p.m. to Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m., alternating legal holidays, and the friend of the court has a schedule of that. You can get on the front of the court website to find out what the legal holidays are and what the schedule is for the legal holidays because they vary. For instance, Christmas Eve is from 9 o'clock a.m. or 9 o'clock p.m. on the 23rd through 9 o'clock p.m. on the 24th, Christmas Day. 9 o'clock p.m. on the 24th through 9 o'clock p.m. on the 25th. So, and there's other dates and times, so you'll have to look at the front of the court website to determine that. There's also, the court will award alternating holidays, I said, uh, half one half of the Christmas vacation period, one half of the summer vacation period, and the court will order that you exercise parenting time in a manner such that the children are all together. So, the weekends where plaintiff has the kids, she would have all the kids. The weekends the defendant has the children, he would have Lorenzo with him with those particular children as the same over the winter and over the summer, spring break, et cetera. The court will order uh, child support consistent with the custody arrangement in this matter. It will. And you're going to have to uh, calculate that. But if you go to the service, let's say you go to michiganlegalhelp.org, it'll help you take you right through that. You'll put in the fact that you do have split custody. The court is going to take into consideration in this matter that uh, and find that the plaintiff does have income at $16 per hour for four hours per week. The court will find that the defendant has income of 40 hours per week at $23 per hour. Court notes that there was some testimony about another business. The court finds that that's at this point, he's only been operating three months. The speculative as to what that's going to be, that could be subject to uh, review in the future. But at this point, the court's not taking that into consideration. Likewise, the court isn't taking into consideration the uh, plaintiff's overtime, which she stated she has, but there's uncertainty as to what that is. So the court will uh, take into account just the income as I've stated, and then you'll have to calculate that and you will figure it based upon the other party having 90 overnights with the other children. So when it's calculated, it'd be calculated that uh, plaintiff has 90 overnights per week with the three children and defendant has 90 overnights per week with the one child. Give you a calculation as to what the support obligation would be and the difference with, uh, and then the, the party, obviously that would be ordered to pay would be the party, uh, that the calculation would establish. Uh, Court believes that the parenting time, as the court has announced, is consistent with Michigan bylaws 722.27a, taking into account uh, all the factors uh, under the uh, statute, meaning 
special circumstances or needs of the children. The court doesn't find there's any special needs other than as the defendant testified about the severe allergy that Kyrie has, food allergy. Uh, second factor is whether the child is less than one year of age. Uh, child isn't less than one year of age. There's been no testimony that the child is still nursing, but irregardless, that uh, hasn't been addressed. Next factor is likelihood of abuse or neglect of a child during parenting time. There's no testimony that either of the parties will abuse the child. Making that the next factor is likelihood of abuse of a parent during the exercise of parenting time. The court will not consider that as well. Next one, inconvenience or burdensome impact of travel. There's been no testimony about that being an issue, so the court will not consider it. Next factor is whether the parent is like reasonably likelihood likely to uh, exercise ordered parenting time. The court will find that the both parties would exercise their ordered parenting time. Next factor is whether the party is frequently failed to exercise parenting time. The court won't find that. The next factor is threatened or actual detention of the child. And uh, court doesn't find any threatened or actual detention. And the other fact, relevant factors, the court's already addressed. That this, again, is consistent with the ruling of this court as it relates to parenting time. Uh, again, there were no issues concerning property in this case, so the court will find that the parties had uh, keep will keep each of the, keeps the personal property in their respective possessions. They will retain that. The uh, plaintiff has asserted a claim for spousal support. Spousal support uh, is provided for by statute, MCL 552.23, uh, and the court required to take into account various factors uh, considered in the Louts case at 298 Mishap 21, Friends 2012 case, take into account past relationship and conduct of the parties, length of the marriage, the ability of the parties to work. The length of the marriage has not been uh, significant. It's a, really at the time of separation, it was a nine year marriage. The ability of the parties to work, both of the parties are working. The source and amount of property awarded the parties, that's again, not an issue either. Age of the parties, both the parties are young in this matter. So that should not preponderate uh, in the way of support. The ability of the parties to pay, uh, again, of course, do not find that uh, there has been substantial testimony about the ability to pay by either of the parties. Next, the present situation of the parties. Again, the parties seem to be paying their bills. They are, again, uh, under the present situation, there's been no showing of need, and the court will address the needs of the parties. There's been no showing of need for spousal support. Uh, health of the parties, there's no parties are not, uh, in fact, in, impacted by any health issues that would uh, constitute a need for support. Fault, there's not been any, uh, again, credible uh, testimony about fault. Prior standard of living of either or is either re party responsible for the support of others. There's been very little, if any, testimony about that. Uh, next factor is the effect of cohabitation on the party's financial status. Court will note both of the parties appear to be cohabitating. Uh, other factor is the contribution to the joint estate. That's really not relevant as the parties have kept the minimal property in their respective possessions and the general principles of equity. The general principles of equity do not preponderate in favor of awarding spousal support. So the court will deny an award of spousal support in this matter, finding that that has not been established or proven in this particular case. With that, um, Ms. Daniel, you're going to be required to include all of that in a judgment of divorce. And I said, if you haven't uh, uh, written down everything that the court said, you can go back and review it on uh, YouTube. You'll have 30 days to do so before it's deleted. So make sure you start right away because oftentimes you have to submit, you're going to have to submit the judgment of divorce the Uniform Child Support Order, and the Judgment Information Form 
those three documents you have to submit to the front of the court for their approval. And if oftentimes when parties are not represented, they get an objection because they haven't included something that they have to include or they've calculated something wrong. And if so, then the front of the court is gonna file an objection, then you're gonna to have to redo it again and get them to agree and to uh, approve it. Once they do approve it, you can submit it to the defendant for his approval. And if he approves it, then you can submit it to the court at that time. If in fact he doesn't approve it in that he believes it's an error or you made a mistake, then you're gonna to have to notice it up for entry before the court. With that, Ms. Daniel, do you have any questions in this particular case? Or do you believe that the court has any way omitted or failed to address something I need to address? Uh, you said, where do I go again to do that? Okay, for the third time, michiganlegalhelp.org. Okay, all right. And what happens, they, you put in, you'll, you'll, you'll get to the point where it's talking about preparing a judgment of divorce in the UCS, UCSO, and it'll take you right down through a series of questions, and you just answer all those, and in the end, you should be able to come up with a proposed judgment of divorce and a uniform child support order. And I will tell you, as you do it, they're going to have a lot of provisions that are not going to make any sense to you, but those are standard provisions that are required by statute that they be in the judgment. So put those in uh, because otherwise the front of the court will not approve the judgment. With that, is there anything else, Ms. Daniel? So we basically have joint custody? You have joint legal custody. Okay. And when you prepare the form, there's a place in there, a joint legal physical, Physical custody, you have physical custody of Lorenzo, and defendant has physical custody of the other three. And then the support under the parenting time, you're going to have to split that, is that because you have parenting time with the three, he has parenting time with Lorenzo, so you're going to actually have two paragraphs under the parenting time which are going to be reciprocal provisions the only thing is is it does provide that each of you would have a midweek parenting time from 4 to 8 o'clock p.m obviously you can't do that and have the kids together so you're going to have to put usually if the parties have the kids together it'll be if the parties can't agree it would be like a wednesday and then we always put in there you do it at a date that the the day that the parties can agree. If you can't agree, in your case, because you can't do it that way, if the parties can't agree, then what I'll do simply order that uh, Miss Daniel, you would have the children on Tuesday and he would have the children on Wednesday night. If you can't agree to other nights. Do you understand what you're saying? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions you have, ma'am? No, I don't. I was just hoping to get my daughter, Ari, too. Well, that's a hope. That's not what the evidence established or dictated. So the court can only go with the evidence and the law in the case. Mr. Daniel, is there anything else you have or questions about or you believe that the court failed to address that I need to before we conclude? No, Your Honor. I think everything was Okay. Fine. Thank you both. I hope that everything works out for you. And uh, best of luck to you. And the court will conclude this matter at 219.